Hello, so in this session, I'm going to walk you through the delivery module. So we're going to start off by registering our patient who's come for delivery. So click on workspace, reception, and I'll quickly register my client and search if her record is already there in the system. If not, I'll click on OK and go ahead and register. in the month the day i'll click on check demographics just so that i make sure that i'm not creating another duplicate in the system no record found okay it's telling me that there are no duplicates found with the same name and surname so i'll click on register and i'll go ahead and put a demographics I'll put in the address now because uh, we want to admit her for delivery we're going to click admit in patient and select the word and the reason so I'll select a reason and then I'll click on admit patient patient successfully admitted click OK now that my patient has been successfully admitted I'm going to go to workspace inpatients remember we admitted them in inpatient so I'll click on inpatients and I admitted them in the labor ward so I'll attend to ward and this is my patient and I'll click on the action icon just to confirm if these are her demographics and I'll go ahead and open patient file and we want to go to the delivery module so I'm going to click on delivery patient has no delivery record do you wish to create it yes so we're going to put their ANC number if they do not have we're going to generate and we're going to put their last um, non-menstrual period it was last year in October 16th labor onset I'll tick and I'll put the date started today then I'll put the time it was 4 p.m. and I'll click on close then if the client has been referred from another health facility you're going to click on add here and select the health facility where they were referred from select then if the membranes have now ruptured you tick and you highlight the date when they ruptured and the time if show is present you tick if not you do not tick then you click register so we've registered the LNMP um, date of onset membranes ruptured so this is the current delivery and we're going to click on social history highlight if our client drinks alcohol if they have basic sanitation if they are on drugs or if they smoke or if they have access to clean water then uh, select medical history record diagnosis if they have any medical history for instance maybe they might have hypertension and I have to select the date when they were diagnosed they're diagnosed in 
2019 September the 20th and I'll click on save any investigation history so if you want to record any investigation history for instance maybe there are HIV tests so you're going to click on record investigation history probably they've done an HIV test before you're going to click on laboratory blood HIV you click on save and you highlight the date when they were tested for HIV and the final result and click on save then you're going to click on previous pregnancy if they have any previous pregnancies you're going to add if they've ever been pregnant in their lives you're going to add that previous pregnancy and highlight whether it's a delivery a miscarriage or abortion if it's an abortion you're going to click on abortion and select the date for instance maybe the abortion happened in 2015 so observe how i use the calendar i'm going to click wait says july 2021 so it'll show me this yes then i'll click on 2021 and then i'll click on the back arrow so i want 2015 and it happened in may on the 15th that's when they had a, an abortion then i'll click on save then i'll close previous pregnancy once i'm done so i've highlighted that they once had a previous pregnancy and it was an abortion in 2015 so i'm going to click on add previous pregnancy again and if they have um, had a miscarriage before you're going to click on miscarriage and select the date so their miscarriage was in 2016 so I'll click in the center here it will give me the months and I'll click on 2021 and I'll click on the back arrow and select 2016 it was in November the 16th then I'll click save once I'm done I'll close previous pregnancy if they have had any other previous pregnancy again you're going to click add previous pregnancy if it was a delivery you're going to select delivery then you add the date and I'll select the date it was in 2019 I'll select the back arrow go to 2019 December 25 and I'll click on serve because I highlighted that it was a delivery I need to highlight whether it was a stillbirth or a live birth if it was a stillbirth, I'll click on add stillbirth and select the health facility where the stillbirth happened. And I'll select the diagnosis. And the gender at birth, it was a male and the type and the type of delivery and the place of birth what was the child's birth weight and if there are any notes I'll type them there and then I'll click on save so now I've highlighted that it was a delivery but it was a still birth if they've had any other delivery and probably maybe they have one child who's alive I'll add a live birth and then I'll go ahead and register child so if you are certain that the child has been registered in the system before you're simply going to click on look up so that you search for the child if not you click on register child and you're going to put the last name of the child and their first name and they are male then you click on save so now you want the birth weight country where they were born place of birth the health facility where they were born the type of delivery and you highlight whether the placenta was retained whether they had pph and if they have any birth defects you click you highlight and click on save 
then you can once you're done you can close previous pregnancy so once we're done with previous pregnancy so this will help us calculate the para and the gravita for the mother so let's click on delivery home now you realize that we have a para 3 gravita 4 and because we put um, an investigation history highlighting that they once tested um, uh, for HIV and they're positive we have their HIV status because we've highlighted that the membranes uh, have ruptured uh, it's showing us the, imp the the details that we put there so all this was um, registration so you're going to go ahead to pre-assessment so I'll click on pre-assessment and our overview does not have anything so we'll go ahead and do next general examinations so if you look at a uh, lie engagement presentation or DEMA they're all uh, blank so if you want to update we're going to click on update details and put our information here and click on update and we're going to go ahead and select nest for general examinations click on update details Then I'll put in the information there. So uh, basically you're observing your patient. And you click on a uh, code felt and you click on update. If you are a doctor, you're going to go ahead and click on Doctor General Examinations. It's still the same information. Doctor Vaginal Examinations, same information. Then if you're going to be doing any other investigations, you're going to go ahead and record investigations. But in this instance, you're not going to do any investigation. So I'll go ahead and click on Delivery Home so that I go back. Now that we're done with pre-assessment, um, if at your facility you have um, the RBF program, then you're going to click on RBF details. If your client, if your clients are given RBF vouchers, you're going to have to enter those details in the system. So you're going to click on the green, and you add the RBF voucher number and the date on voucher. So if your facility does not have the RBF program, you do not need to fill this in. You can go ahead and skip. So go to investigations. We are not recording any investigations currently. So skip and go to monitoring. So we want to monitor our client. This is the overview. Then we're going to go to vitals and record vitals. Remember each time you select a vital, make sure that you click on the record button. So I'm going to click on record here. So once you click on record, it will highlight the time that you uh, recorded the vital. Then I'll select temperature and click on record. pulse click on record respiratory rate click on record fetal heart rate click on record if you've measured their height just click on edit So the height is in centimeters, click on save, weight, click on save, 
if you've recorded there are more work if you've measured them edit click on save if you've measured the head circumference click on save if uh, you measured the height of funders enter and then you save so after capturing vitals the next button is investigations we are not doing any investigations at the moment we do not want to prescribe anything for our patient we are not dispensing them anything yet then i'll click on cervix so i'll click on the green button and assessment in percentage and my client is already at nine centimeters so i'll put nine and descent of head and i'll click on save because the service is at nine um it the system would highlight that i need to admit my client onto the partogram so it's asking me do you want to admit the client onto the partogram at this particular time i'll click on yes so once i click on yes the system begins to plot the partogram for me so i'm going to click on yes and because i've clicked on the yes it has now opened a screen where i need to enter recordings that would um, be particularly for the partogram plotting so i'll put in vitals for this current reading then the fetal heart rate the pulse temperature once I'm done capturing vitals I'm going to move to the next tab which is contractions the total number of contractions so because I've highlighted that it's four, it's going to ask me a duration per contraction in seconds. So the duration, I'll put the duration per contraction in seconds. And once I'm done, I'll click on save. Then I'll move on to your analysis. Going to add volume. Protein. Select the test kit. The test kit batch. The result. Acetone. The test kit. Test kit batch. Result. Once we're done, we move on to our cervix. Remember, we said it's now at nine membranes we highlight that highlighted that they have ruptured we highlighted the labor onset we're going to go ahead and um, select amniotic fluid and molding so if there is no molding or kaput you just leave it then you go ahead and uh, if you want to issue oxytocin you're going to select the formulation but we're not giving her any oxytocin yet and we are not giving her any medication yet so um, once we're done entering this we're going to click on back to overview and the system will ask me are you sure you want to close this partogram reading and I'll click on yes so once I click on yes it's going to start plotting our partogram this is the fetal heart rate so it's beginning to plot this is our cervix and descent of head we say it is at nine and the descent is at one then these are our contractions we did not give her any oxytocin or medication so it's blank this is the bp or pulse and this is the temperature that we recorded 
protein, acetone, and volume results. So it's beginning to plot our partogram slowly. So it's telling us that our next reading is due in 23 minutes. Our next reading, we would want to capture the fetal heart rate, contractions, and pulse. And if you look at where it says alerts, we currently have zero alerts. If you click inside, if there are any danger signs, it's going to show you. Maybe if the BP is high, for instance, or the temperature is too high, it will highlight as a danger sign. If there's any missing information, it will also highlight, for instance, maybe if you forget to record uh, maybe fetal heart rate or you forget to record contractions, it will also highlight to you that there's something that you forgot to record. If they have, if there are any observations that are due, it will let you know. For instance, in 22 minutes, we would need to record the fetal heart rate, the contractions and pulse. So these are the, our alerts. So if you go to our overview, that's where we were, where it shows us the partogram. And in case you need to edit, maybe you realize you have entered um, a vital incorrectly, you're going to click on manage. And it's going to show you that um, what the date and time the recording was taken and who did it. I'm actually uh, signed in as admin. And if you want to view, you're going to click on view. And you'll view what has been captured already. So if I want to edit, for instance, maybe the temperature was 36, not 36.3, and I need to correct this. I'm going to go back to the manage button and I'm going to edit. So with this edit, I can only edit um, an entry that I created and I can only edit in in a space of 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, this edit button becomes disabled. So I'm going to click on edit and I want to correct temperature. So I'll delete this and leave it like that and save. Once I'm done, I'm going to go to back to overview. And yes, I want to close this partogram. So I've successfully edited. So now we're going to wait for the next 20 minutes and take the next reading after 20 minutes. So I'll just pause. All right, we're now due for our next reading. Observations reading due in zero minutes. So we need to do our next observations and always observe the server time. So the server time is showing us that it's currently uh, 18 past 10. Let me just zoom in a bit. So always make sure that the current server time it's the correct time. So I'll just zoom that out. So now our observations are overdue by zero minutes. So if you go to our alerts, go to due observations, we overdue by one minute. So we want to go ahead and capture. So I'll click on record partogram. We want to record our second reading. So currently now our patient is now at 10 centimeters. So you're about to add a partogram reading at uh, 2239. Are you sure you want to proceed? I'll click on yes. And I will record the fetal heart rate. If you need to record the BP again, go ahead, click on save. If you need to record the pulse again, go ahead. Once you're done, click on save. And now you want to record contractions, our total number of contractions. For my client is still full and the duration. 
and once I'm done I'll click on save if I'm going to do another urinalysis test you go ahead for demonstration purposes I'll just go ahead put in select the test kit select the test kit badge put the result acetone select the test kit and the test kit badge and the result and click on save now the dilatation is at 10 centimeters and it's at 0 over 5. we highlighted membranes ruptured labor onset amniotic fluid it's still clear no molding no kaput we are not giving them any oxytocin we are not giving them any medication currently we do not have any notes to write so if i click on back to overview and close this partogram reading you realize that it has uh, plotted this was the first reading this is the second one so it will automatically plot as you capture the information so this is our um, cervix this is our um, descent of head these are our contractions no oxytocin oxytocin was given no medication was given this is our bp and pulse this is our temperature and these are the tests that we did so now because our dilatation is at 10 definitely she's now giving birth so I'm going to click on labor outcome and click on birth outcome after she has given birth we want to record the birth outcome so this will only happen after she has given birth so we're going to highlight and add whether it's a live birth or still birth so currently ours is a live birth so I'll click on live birth the date of birth and the time and the name we'll name them the way we usually name our babies at the hospital so this is baby Emma John's delivery method had circumference crown to heel Birth weight Abga at one Abga at five Meconium was it stained? If it's stained, click on yes. Conditions at birth condition after five minutes, the sex of the baby, the feeding type any abnormalities if the child was resuscitated you highlight if the child was breastfed you click and you click on save so we've recorded a live birth so if these are still bad you're going to go ahead and record a still bad the delivery method maybe there were twins And you highlight the cause of stillbirth and click on save so after recording the birth outcome we're going to go ahead to record membranes and placenta click on update details delivery method the date of delivery and the time membrane state placenta straight state Membrane description Placenta description Placenta weight in grams Cord vessels Cord description So as a clinician you will put the the code description and the code state and your update details after membranes and placenta you go ahead and record mother outcome if the mother is alive you tick on alive 
then you update details what was the temperature after delivery BP after delivery uterus contracted BP after an hour you're going to record the BP after one hour pulse after delivery if there was any skin to skin with the baby after an hour you're going to record the pulse after one hour and you click on update so this is the mother outcome so you're going to click on delivery and update details delivered by assisted by estimated blood loss measured blood loss total blood loss if there was any PPH perineum so if it's not intact that's when it will ask you for a method of repair a suture type and who repaired so ours is currently intact and I'll click on save then I'll click on labor summary click on edit at the top the labor was spontaneous membranes ruptured artificially oxytocin issued after delivery yes then I'll click on update so the labor summary will automatically calculate for us if you look uh, we have stages so we have stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 so we have the start date and start time of stage 1 and its end date and time and the total time it took for stage 1 stage 2 it will show us when stage 2 started when it ended and the total time stage 3 what time it started when it ended and the total time and the then it calculates for you the total duration of labor so you cannot calculate labor summary the system calculates for you depending on um, the details that you would have entered into the system so basically that's how we calculate the labor summary so once we're done I'm going to go to click on delivery home so you will uh, be able to see all the vitals that you have entered so basically these are the vitals that we entered the contractions the cervix so remember um, we recorded our pathogram but because we have recorded a birth outcome our pathogram is now closed so it will draw a line and show us that pathogram is closed so in order for us to actually be able to see our pathogram and print it I'll just click on delivery home and then I'll close so we want to move our patient to uh, the PNC ward so I'm going to click on next patient and then send to next ward which is the PNC and done so automatically uh, because we have a birth outcome which was baby Emma you'll discover that baby Emma is already in the queue so we also want to move baby Emma to PNC so we're going to click there open patient file next patient send to next ward and send our baby Emma to PNC then we click on done so now if you want to see our pathogram going to click on reports pathograms and our pathogram is for Emma Jones so this is the pathogram so because we can't have um, the whole pathogram in one screen it's divided into the fetal heart rate amniotic fluid molding kaput the graph for the cervix and descent of head and it show us the the baby 
the weight, the gender, the head circumference, upgrade one, upgrade five, and so forth. Then it will show us the uh, graph for the contractions. Well, during labor and delivery, we did not uh, issue any oxytocin or medication. That's why it's blank. Then it will show us the graph for the BPN pulse, graph for the temperature. And these are the investigations that we did. So if you want to print your pathogram, you go ahead and print. If you want to export, you go ahead and export. So basically, we're done with the delivery module. And I hope you understood and thank you very much.